Hey guys, so for the last installment in uh, the Enig vs Hard Gold series I'm going to go with the popular request which is to have a look at a LCD board and I suspect what probably most of you would like me to have a look at are these uh, fingers on the end that are obviously gold plated. This particular one unfortunately had some uh, plastic, like I assume the glue that they use for the uh, the foil that sits over there kind of stuck onto there so I've tried to clean up this one here as much as possible just using some acetone to dissolve the, the, the plastic away so we'll cut out a little bit of that and have a look um, there are some little gold spots on the other side but uh, because you've got components soldered to this side it's almost 100% guaranteed that this will all be Enig and in fact I'm not even going to bother trying it this is definitely all Enig the only chance that this have of having any hard gold on it really is on those fingers but because it's not a sliding connection that has to work multiple times there is almost no chance that this is going to be hard gold I'm pretty much guaranteeing that we're going to find that that's Enig anyway um, and then we've got my box of junk processors here and I'm just going to pick a nice looking gold one at random and so that will be our uh, that will be our test sample I have actually not got any idea whether we're going to be looking at Enig or hard gold on this I am leaning towards Enig because you've got some capacitors soldered into the middle there and they wouldn't be doing that onto hard gold um, I think I might have a quick look but if I can find a pinless processor that doesn't have components in the middle there is probably a better chance that that will be hard gold but um, yeah I don't think you're gonna find one so let's pick this one here the, the gold on it appears to be a very nice deep gold so you know we'll give it the best chance we can and we'll put a little drop of our test acid on that as before I've got the same uh, definitely a hard gold tested little bit of RAM finger that we used before and I'll use a known Enig sample which is this one here to um, basically check uh, give us a give us a reference of what we know Enig is okay so I'll get set up and uh, let's see how this goes okay guys so we've got our four samples set up here as you can see uh, under the microscope uh, top left is Enig top right is hard gold Bottom left is the Pentium 4 processor and bottom right is the little bit of um, LCD panel fingers. Uh, interesting, uh, so firstly uh, I had one user Robon's uh, comment on the, um, the reflection so it's getting off the glass. So you'll see this time around I've got it sitting on some uh, paper or some paper towel which will also serve to to capture any nitric acid that uh, might fall off the pad so that's uh, solved that problem the other interesting thing that I noticed once I put this processor upside down is as you will see there it kind of looks like it really looks like there's gold everywhere uh, which is I don't know had no idea what happened there and what it actually is I'll show you guys if I can flip this over Just zoom out a bit is it is the it's the heat transfer compound that was used on this processor and it's probably going to be copper but we'll just check a little bit of this with uh, nitric acid as well uh, just to see whether it's um, copper or gold based but yeah definitely when it's on the processor like that it definitely looks like uh, copper but then looking at it uh, just on the paper where it's rubbed off it definitely looks like little flakes of gold and so the interesting thing with this processor might be that it's got more gold in the it's got more gold in the actual heat transfer compound than it does in the in the gold plating on the bottom uh, the other comment that has come through is that i need to you know use autofocus uh, here and there because as you can see uh, the bottom ones out of focus and the top ones are not that is just a that is just an artifact of using the microscope. The problem is that there's about two millimeters difference in height between the stuff at the top and the processor at the bottom, which means that I, I kind of have to 
manually so that'll bring the processor into focus but the other stuff will be slightly out and that that obviously gets worse when you're when you're actually uh, zoomed in this is the the maximum zoom on the microscope so nothing much i can do about that i'll just keep on trying to focus as best i can so you all know the you all know the drill by now 35 percent nitric acid solution let's give it a drop or two on there that's the enix sample our hard gold test sample our p4 processor and our let's spread that around make sure we get it everywhere on that and that's the uh the lcd so interestingly enough uh, this is the way life works the uh one pin on the hard gold sample appears to be reacting first which is um is not ideal but what's happening there obviously is you can see how much scraping this particular one that i've picked has done and so obviously um, the other the other problem here is that i've used the same hard gold sample for multiple for multiple tests so what i might do on this one just just because we, we know that that is hard gold is i might give it some more up here and down here just wherever I, I can't remember where i have used this one in the test in the past but uh, believe me when i say that middle one is hard gold i'm just not doing a very good job of showing it to you guys the in example just like we're used to is um, reacting vigorously through the gold so this obviously is a brand new in example because i can't reuse these like i do with the hard gold so that is what we expect on that one pretty similar on our lcd board we are expecting that to be in egg it definitely is you can see very vigorous reaction and i'm betting there is going to be nothing left uh, you know other than a little bit of black dust of the gold plating on that probably a little bit more interesting is that so far I need to get this into focus because it's higher so far there's not very much happening with our uh, with our Pentium 4 CPU so that's actually looking quite that's looking quite interesting my oops hard gold sample is let me get that back into focus or this is the problem with uh, having things at different heights the hard gold sample has definitely got a bit of a reaction going nothing like that but you can see some of the pins especially where they've been scraped clearly has a reaction going these ones up here appear to be doing better Let's see there's no reaction on those ones even though they've got just as much nitric acid i think the reason is that down here is is where is the site that i used for this exact same test last time and so they they've basically have been exposed before but i still think when i scratch these later on we're going to see uh, solid foils those ones there no reaction so we do know that that is hard gold um yeah so that's basically where we are for now you can see the uh the in egg on that uh, lcd panel basically reacting pretty much the same as the top left in egg so far i'm quite surprised by the the little dots on the processor they at this point still appear to be hard gold but yeah i think what we'll do now is just what we've done before i'll go to uh, time lapse for 15 minutes and then we'll pop back and have a look uh, give these a scratch and see uh, what's left of them okay guess you guys soon okay guys so we've had about 15 minutes go past and i'm sure we are all equally impressed by how well this uh these little golden dots on the processor appear to be holding up it actually seems like they're going to be hard gold which is always very nice but let's have a quick look at our samples just to see how we've gone so as usual just going to give them the scratch test with the pipette the in example i'm expecting it's going to just scratch off as a as a powder so there's no uh there's no real flakes there or anything which is pretty much what we're expecting you can see if you look closely i will allow you to look more closely now oops to get this focus sorted 
you can see uh, little tiny bits of gold flakes floating and um, gives you some idea of just how thin they are so uh, yep Enig behaves exactly as we've seen before uh, the I've got to sort the focus out here squeeze that down the um, the hard gold sample you'll notice I've I tipped over while the time lapse was going just to put some on the other side as well but there's not going to be any on, on this particular side there's definitely not going to be any um, ability to scratch anything off see if the other side actually managed so you can see the uh, the wear on the other side was quite deep and um, that's why I'll just give it a and now even where it even where it was worn and the acid could get to the base metal you don't, you don't really get much happening let's just have a look at that one there it appears to be I think that was the most reactive one last time as well you can kind of see there was a, there was obviously a scratch right through that one which that's why it reacted so well but even with that you just have no chance of actually scratching off a foil or anything at this point it's going to take a lot more time for the acid to work its way around the gold let's have a look at this one which is our lcd finger um, it does I'll, I'll be honest and say it does kind of look like they are foils at this point but i don't think they're going to be i'm just going to have to squeeze it down and then get the focus sorted so we can actually give them a scratch yeah let's have a look Yeah, so definitely not coming off as easily as the proper enig so i think but yeah i mean you've got that same you can kind of see the see the black look at the fine particles um if you compare this to to some of the thicker gold we've had in previous videos you can see that this is definitely going to be enig as well see all the fine particles floating so that is pretty much what we expect so or what i expected is is that was going to be enig um yeah so now for the uh the surprise of the day is how well these um these little dots on the processes are have held up i am very very surprised they do appear to be they do appear to be hard gold we'll just give them a give them a little bit of a scratch but i don't think i'm gonna have much effect on them to be honest like there's no real visible reaction I think the little bits of uh, little bits of things floating there is probably contamination from the last one that I that I tried next door. Um, yeah, you, the only the only reaction you can see on these, if you look closely, is mostly around the edges. That little dot there appears to have a little bit of a reaction going. But yeah, I would say that there is a reasonable chance. Let me see if I can if I can give those ones a bit of a scratch. I would say there is a reasonable chance that these guys are a decent thickness gold plating. I don't think they're going to be quite as thick as RAM. But yeah, like as you can see, most of the reaction on them appears to, you know, at least it starts around the either the center where obviously the little spike from the socket has hit it. And isn't that actually amazing looking at how accurately the spikes in the socket are heat hitting each one of those pads like dead center that's that's quite impressive um, yeah so some of them appear to start having a little bit of a reaction through the middle but it's pretty clear based on how long they've been going that that has pretty much got to be a reasonably thick gold plating definitely thicker than enig so um, yeah i think probably Probably the next video from me you'll see is I'll, I'll go through my box and process a whole bunch of these, uh, just the, the kind of the basis from these processors and just see, uh, see how much gold we get out of those. So keep an eye out for that. That'll probably be there quite soon. Now, the next thing that I wanted to check is just some of this, some of this stuff here, which looks like it definitely has a golden look to it. It might be copper but i guess that's why we have the nitric acid we'll find out in a second this is the uh, 
the heat transfer compound that was on that processor. So I just have to find the right one over there ish. Give it a bit of a nitric acid. Yeah, no, okay, so I think that's actually copper heat transfer compound because you can see as soon as the nitric acid hits it, um, let me see if I can get that focusing a bit better for you guys. As soon as the nitric acid hits it, you can clearly see there's a uh, reaction happening there and it's almost like it's changed color a little bit. So I am going to bet that that is actually a copper heat transfer compound, which actually makes sense because I'm pretty sure that that is a thing. But uh, yeah, it definitely does appear to be, it does look very golden, just looking at it there. If we look at it on the actual processor, we can quickly dump a little a drop on there. I'm not sure what that's going to do with the, with the underlying base metal, but oh yeah, look at that. That's quite cool, eh? You can just see how quickly it reacts and uh, how quickly it reacts with the um, with the little drop of nitric acid. So definitely uh, copper heat transfer compound. That's pretty much exactly what we expect. Okay, guys. So uh, yeah, so that was a good video. So we've we've seen that uh, the. The LCD boards are going to be pretty much enig as you expect having that many components soldered to them. And the surprise of the day is that these uh, dots on the pinless processors appear to be a relatively decent thickness coating. So I think, as I said, next I'll be processing a bunch of those and just see how they go. So hopefully uh, this video has been useful to you guys and the series. If uh, there are any other good ideas for things to test, please feel free to let me know. Okay, catch you guys later.